Take a look at this. I've somewhat straightened the place up. It may not look like much, but this is the first time I've really been able to spend much time out here. I need to get ready to build that vanity. Actually, I have to build that vanity ASAP. Still don't have this place the way I want it. It's not even close. I'm hoping. I've been bidding things extremely high lately in hopes that the uh, supply and demand equal out and it spaces out my jobs a little bit so I can spend more time in here and get this place built out. If I get all those jobs that I've bid extremely high, well, I don't know, maybe I can pay someone to come in and do this work. Not too bad. This side needs to be a little bit longer. Pencil means go up that way, but you get the idea of what I'm looking for. And this will be 100% painted. And I think you guys might like the color. So what you're looking at is the face frame just loosely laid out on the table. You want to be using the Craig jig with these screws. Say so this is the inside of the cabinet. Um, you don't want the screw to go this way and into the end grain. What you want is the screw to go this way and into the side of the wood. Do you guys know that you can store your, your bits underneath your, your jig? Got a practice piece clamped in. This is my test piece. What I want to do is test it at the end to see if this splits out at all. These things, these screws here, uh, are self-drilling so it shouldn't split the wood out. One thing that's common with these pocket holes is even though I had it clamped down, it likes to shift the piece that the screws go in uh, in the direction that the screws go in. It's, it sucks it in. You can kind of see that lip right there. To combat this symptom of the pocket hole is they glue it. Even though this is a butt joint, they will glue it and clamp it and let that glue set up and then snug down those screws. how I got my practice run set up on getting everything clamped together. This is a piece of oak. The idea is to clamp these things to this flat surface here 
uh, as tight as possible so that they don't do that shifting. Perfect. Now this setup here is to glue and screw the other side and things are slightly warped. We're talking a heavy 32nd to a 16th at the most. So this here is a spacer to keep these two apart and this clamp is just barely screwed down to get, to get everything to match up perfectly. This is my piece of plywood that's going to be the sides, the back, and the shelf. If you are a patron, uh, you'll remember that I talked about chip out, and I had that old, that old blade that I went through, oh it's over here, that it's a pretty high tooth count, but it's missing a whole bunch of the carbide tips. And we talked about chip out and which side of the board to have up and down to avoid chip out but I got this blade look at that how many teeth are on this thing 140 teeth on this guy what I'm gonna do is scrap this end piece here it's got a um, you know these things get damaged when you move them around and you know they're just from Home Depot so I'm gonna use this guide uh, to make my first cut and then I'll make more cuts using this thing. A track saw would be nice. I've got a video coming out about a track saw. It didn't work so well. And I've got another video coming out about a different track saw. Um, but obviously I don't have a track saw today. All I got is this, Harbor Freight Cutting Guide. Obviously this is the back and <clears throat> I'm going to mark out where I'm going to put my pocket holes. Four or five should do it.
This one has to get screwed together differently than I did the back one. I did the back one that way just because it's the back and I wanted it flat up against the wall and gave me more depth for drawers and things. Now this one, I can't just screw it together like this. This face frame has to be flush with this. So what I'm going to do is just take a measurement and cut a piece of wood. This is three quarters of an inch. That'll rest right up against there. See right down there, that gives me my spacing correctly. Oh. It's a new day, and there's only a few things left to do on this. Well, to get it to something that stands on the ground. Alrighty. I've got a spacer clamped to the leg. I think I got it on there, right? I don't. No, I don't have it on there. This will be the interesting part to see how well this glued up. Actually, looks pretty darn good. Real good. To a good start. Uh, this is going to be the end of this video just because there's too much footage uh, to put into one video. So the next video I'll be addressing a few different things. I already noticed that gotta, I don't know how this is going to undermount here because this is so uh, uh, recessed. I'm not sure I may be doing some custom custom whittling away at the inside of this frame here. Stay tuned for that. Hopefully we'll get this thing painted, doors and drawers, get the, the hole cut out for the plumbing, get all the pocket holes plugged and filled. Goodbye.